I'm, uh, I'm here with Clive from, from CEDAR. Clive, um, we haven't spoken to you before on IPS TV. I think it's fair to say that you're a company known mostly for studio equipment. Yeah, and, this and here's this rather beautiful, extraordinary tiny thing next to you. How does this come about? Well, back in uh, 2000, we produced the DNS 1000 product, which was aimed really for post-production, for uh, cleaning up dialogue. And then as time went on, people moved away in that arena more to the plugins and the hardware became more usable in broadcast. So for doing sports or live TV shows or that sort of thing. And we developed the DNS8, which is an eight channel version of this product with a learn function, which allowed us to very quickly uh, learn the noise and um, automatically take it out basically across eight channels. That product led everyone to say, this is great, but we'd love a smaller two channel version that we could put in a bag and take out on location. And here we have the, the DNS2, which is, which is that product. Um, it's an extraordinary thing to think that this is a really small product. You've, you've simplified this. I think what's going on underneath the hood isn't particularly simplified. I think you've just you've made it simpler for idiots like me to use in the field <laughs> rather than uh, being very forensic in a dubbing theatre. So that's kind of it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and the, uh, the DNS8 has only, uh, uh, only AES digital in and out, so it's, it's a more of a studio-based product. Um, and we felt with this that it should be sort of uh, more adaptable on its inputs and outputs. So on this one we do have um, two channel analog inputs which can be either line, mic or mic with phantom power. Um, analog outputs but then to go along with all our previous hardware we have an AES in and out as well for digital and it runs on 12 volts. It runs on 12 volts draining Six watts or something. Six watts. Yeah, it's not very Fantastic. Much. So that's not going to yeah. upset me with the, the battery on the bottom of the car. It weighs very little. Put it in a bag. It's not going to cause a problem to anybody. So, so talk me through what what actually can it do? What what are so we capable of? It's really good at removing uh, various background annoyances when you're filming. So if you're you know if you were doing a period drama and there was a distant rumble of a motorway or something, then you can, you can very nicely take that away. Or even if you're indoors in a studio and there's air conditioning or something like that, again, it can suppress that to a level where it's not obtrusive and your dialogue still sounds nice and clean. So. And low latency, I mean, it would have to be low latency yeah. if I'm going to use the, it in uh, The latency is uh, less than 10 samples, not 10 milliseconds, 10 samples. So, yeah, not an issue at all, not an issue at all. Um, just show me the, the controls at the front because it's such a simple device. Yep, very simple. There's a setup here just to set your mic uh, or line level inputs. And then you have two channels. These can be set up completely independently or you can have them ganged together, which is what I've got today. Um, or you can do a split with them, a mono split. So we take one signal, we split it, and that will allow you to process one side and not the other. So if you want to record a process and a raw track, you can do that at the same time. Um, for each channel, you have the learn function. And this is not something that you would want to take like a noise fingerprint and then switch it off. It's a continually, uh, a continually learning. So as, as noise changes, it, it's working all the time. And um, there's a uh, attenuation control just to decide how much you're going to remove and a bias control, which is how, really how hard that learn algorithm is working. And then once, you've, once it's learning, it doesn't have to learn in silence, it can learn while I'm talking and adapting all the time. We, we hit the magic button and then the noise goes away. And I should sound like I'm in a much quieter environment than I am in this exhibition hall. So hopefully, folks, in post-production, we have actually managed to remove my microphone, which I have to add is not going through the DNS2. Yeah. Uh, Clive's mic is going through the DNS2. I'm going to shut up for a moment. And Clive's just going to tell us a little bit more um, about how you might work it in the field, and you should hear the extraordinary difference between the yeah. two. So it's processing now, and then it's amazing how you get used to that and how quiet it is. And then the moment you switch it off... So in the field, I would... Yep, you would, you would be out in the field, and if you want to do a real quick setup, you know, you've got a problem, here we go, quickly, you hit the learn, you switch the processing on, 
the noise goes away, you might want to do an adjustment to the amount of noise you're removing with this attenuation, and pretty much that's it. I've gone very quiet, folks, because I, I just did want you to hear. Um, Shall I switch it out again? Um, the extraordinary difference, there you go, can I just switch yeah. that back on? So that's without the processing, so it really does. Um, it's an extremely clever box. There is, uh, despite what Clive says to you, there's no technology involved. There is a small demon inside there. Uh, and now and then you see smoke coming out of it where he's sacrificing things to the god of background noise. <laughs>